Hello, welcome, welcome, gorgeous beings of light. This is El Mahara coming to you with miracle number 79 in the 100 Miracles in 100 Days project. And the first step of my fifth dimension activation and effortless manifesting. Let's begin by just focusing on our breath. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth as deep as you can. Filling up your tummy and your lungs with air before releasing out through the mouth. <sighs> with a bit of a sigh. <sighs> and this particular breath is really, really good for releasing. Really good for releasing. <sighs> so if you're having a moment with someone or even just a moment with yourself, or even if some moments are coming up while you're listening to these powerful activations that are encoded with source codes to help you reach your light. So when you're listening, that's why they're so powerful. If you're just listening and breathing, anything that's out of alignment with your soul is going to activate your source within you. And the stuff that's not healed is going to float to the surface. And all you have to do is breathe to release it. You don't have to go playing in it. The minute you blame someone else and go, oh, and especially if you blame me, because I don't take on any of that stuff. Oh, you made me feel sad. You made me feel horrible, whatever, a projection. Whatever you're feeling, it's yours. And just if you don't blame and just breathe that breath, It'll only take a couple of minutes and then whatever that was that was releasing will be gone. You might hear if you've read the comments, people talking about yawning. Yawning is a way to release grief that's stored in your lungs but also in the cells of your being. So yawning, burping, sneezing, farting, they're all okay things when you work with me. Breathe. And it's actually a very powerful, powerful teacher you're working with who can evoke that in you so just breathe and today's miracle we're going to do on um, manifesting manifesting money manifesting abundance but before I begin yesterday and just continue that breath now while I tell today's miracle Yesterday I spoke about um, God's gold light insurance. Absolutely want to stress, do not go out and stop all of your insurances. Do not, especially if you've got them already, do not go out and stop them. Because, and especially don't go out and stop them if you go, huh, oh, what about if someone hits my car? <laughs> wrong frame of mind to be in and that's why so many people eventually cannot pay their insurance one minute longer because they're stressed financially something happens a week later or a month later because they're busy thinking oh what about if my car gets hit and instead of going god please protect my car <laughs> don't let that happen to me you know like I'm a divine being. I, I choose not to be in any car accidents, please, from this moment forward. I choose not to be involved in any natural disasters from this point forward until you know that in every cell of your being. I choose not to get sick anymore until you know that in every cell of your being. Don't, please, don't stop your insurances. I just have known that in every cell of my being for 30 plus years. So, But it's something you can work towards. It's something you can look at how you've been trained, excuse me, to give all your money to the insurance company who's always got a reason not to give it back to you. So, and that's actually what started it for me. I took out, some guy convinced me to take out an A&P life insurance policy and then said to me, this policy will even cover you if you're down the beach. Now listen to this. If you're down the beach and someone steals your purse, it will cover you if you're, you know, if for that. And bugger me dead, like less than two months after I took the policy, or six months it might have been, 
guess what happened? I was down the beach, someone stole my wallet. <laughs> and then of course A&P would not pay up. So that made me cancel that life insurance policy. And, and that then made me question a lot of policies after that. I hadn't had health insurance one for a long time and so on and so on. So as I've said many times, I don't even have a Medicare card, which is the national health system for those of you overseas. And I must be one of the few people in Australia who don't have a Medicare card, so. Just breathe for me, please. So today's miracle is about manifesting money. It's kind of the same, similar thing. I want to share with you a very, very personal story that brought it home to me. I spent a lot of my spiritual career <laughs> screaming at God, where's the money? Where's the money? Like it is in the... Um, in that great movie, which I cannot remember the name of now. Just breathe for me, please. Um, and recently, so it just shows you that it still happens recently, in the last, I don't know, couple of years or so, um, this happened. I was, again, kind of like screaming at God to tell me, where's my money block? If you don't tell me where my money block is, I'm going to bloody la, 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 la. I've been looking for this for years and you're not helping me with it and screaming my head off and going off my nuts. Must have been low on cash again, which used to be the story of my life. Um, and lots of spiritual people, healers especially, have that because of the warrior's oath and the healer's oath, and the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. So keep that in mind. And if you think you have those, then um, just listen to more of these, but listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. When you're getting short on cash, how much of your energy is going into manifesting more money, and how much of it is going into looking for the problem that's causing a lack of money or being stressed or or worrying about the bills that have come in that you can't pay. How much of it falls that way for you? Right? Like just think about it for a moment. Most of the time it's like 99% of your energy is going to the lack and you'll be lucky if 1% is going to manifesting what you want. When you get low on cash, what happens is that all that stuff that you hear and is coming up is, is, is just the ego replaying the old stories. And that's where you have to go, no, no, that's not true. I'm an abundantly wealthy, infinitely wealthy, eternally wealthy, prosperous being of light. And then breathe through the stuff that's coming up. I'm not saying just discard it with fancy or fluffy spiritual stuff. You just say no, like command your being. Go into your heart and just, well, just go into your heart and from your heart command that you're an infinite being. And then breathe and let the stuff that's coming up from the ego transmute back to life. Because what happened when I was in one of my screaming matches with God about money was that um, I was screaming at guy, if you don't tell me what my money block is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on strike. This was just this is when I went really mad. I used to go, that's it. I'm never going, if I don't have enough money to pay my rent next week, I am going to. <laughs> I'm going to quit and I'm never going to do it, be a healer or teacher again. And I'm going to work at Coles. Not that I would ever, ever do that. I never worked at Coles ever when I worked. But I was just, you know... I would get to the end of my tether and this day I really clearly heard them say, what about if you don't have a money block? And I was like, what do you mean I don't have a money block? Off again, a little tangent, throwing a tantrum like a two-year-old. And Spirit said to me, you don't have a money block. You have a, I think I've got a money block and I go out of the fifth dimension where you know everything is infinitely uh, abundant and wealthy and you can have anything you want 
and go back down into 3D duality consciousness and you, you're sifting through your life trying to find a money block that doesn't exist. You don't have a money block. You have a, I think I've got a money block and I keep moving from 5D to 3D trying to find something that doesn't exist. Oh my God. Let's breathe for a moment. How many of you do that? How many of you, the minute the money starts, stops showing up, you start searching for the block, which is effectively keeping you stuck with no money? Breathe. Let's breathe that in and out through your mouth. <sighs> the secret, the secret to making lots of money is to, is to raise your vibration. That's why if you look back through the stories and the lady who manifested $36,000 after just 20 days of listening to these consistently, she was raising her frequency. She was raising her vibration. And she has lots of cool stuff happening now. And you have to also be open to receiving money or abundance in any way. That's the other thing. What we usually do is go, I want to win the lotto because we think that's going to save all our troubles. But your job is just to ask, how can I? How can I manifest $5,000 right now? Oh God, I want to manifest, or not, don't go want. I, please help me manifest $5,000 right now. And you just take, just take three breaths first of all. And then you go, how can I manifest $5,000 right now? And let it go. Just let it go then. No, start going. And I'd like to win the lotto to do that. I'd like to have 10 clients to do that. Because it's not about your chanting. It's not about your, you know, like how many blocks you have. It's really just about the fact that you're, Energy is in a lower frequency. After that happened, after that incident I'm just telling you happened, I began to just breathe into the fifth dimension and ask all of the infinite abundance in the world to wake up inside of me. And I would do that every day. Please show me the infinite wealth that is mine and belongs to me by divine right and that I know is available in the quantum, in the fifth dimension. There's unlimited infinite money, wealth and prosperity in the world. And I would do that. And I would just spend five minutes. Now, what do you think happens? One hour later, you know, your ego's just trying to slip in the back door and go, ah, oh, but you got no money to pay, you're gonna run out of money to pay the rent, or you got no money to pay this bill or whatever. I don't have bills anymore, which is good. Well, seldom because I don't pay insurances and all that sort of stuff. Um, but and I don't go to doctors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But just whatever it is, your ego will find something. Even if you're like me, it still found something. Ah, you got no money to pay your rent in two weeks' time or whatever. And I just went, that's not true. Millions of dollars are on their way to me now, and I would just breathe after making that statement. So for about a week, probably all these other little ego things, which you have to cut it. Do not entertain it. You have to know that that's coming from the past. The very outside amount of time it would take you to change that is six weeks. But the truth is you can change it in about 20, 20 to 25 days by just raising your frequency every day, imagining all of the wealth in the, in the universe coming to you, creating a new story and a new picture. And within two weeks, $10,000 a $10,000 client came in, <laughs> but even more than that, it came in <laughs> just like about 10 minutes before my rent was due. I've asked God if we can have a different story so it doesn't just show up at the last minute, just like now. I think everything's gonna change once I move to this beautiful new home that I'm moving to, but you know, like this whole story of it showing up at the last minute, it's almost like I'm, I kind of said to God the other day, haven't I, haven't I got the whole freaking trust thing down pat now? Because like it was 
Saturday and Sunday, my lease ran out on the 28th of February, which is tomorrow. No, it's today actually here in Australia. It's today. Oh, isn't that ironic? And I'm going up to see my new place on the 1st of March, 2023. I have to drop off a load, but also just to check it out and make sure that my phone works and everything for work. I'm sure it does. She says that both hers and a hubby do, so that's going to be perfect. So just breathe for me, please. That's what it's about. It is about checking every, all the time, checking you know, don't let your ego overrun and don't let it go off and then, oh my God, what will happen if I don't pay my rent? What will happen? And even if you're trying to, um, you know, get out of paying your insurances, I would try just kind of like before you stop doing that, imagining that you have no insurance and see what shit comes up from inside of you and deal with that before you actually cancel them, if that's what, cancel your insurances, if that's what you're planning to do. Just breathe for me, please. And so, and also just be open. You know, somebody told me the other day that they went to buy a piece of furniture from somebody and the lady was moving country and she gave her a whole stack of it, you know. When I moved here, and so, you know, that's worth money to you. When I moved here, now I've given the contents of my house away about seven times because I just move and I absolutely do not see the point in paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars in some cases to move stuff when, you know, um, the price that you pay to move it, you could have brought brand new stuff. So I'm really big on, I'm not attached to stuff anyway. So when I arrived here, I'd just done that. I'd just given away, you know, I'd amassed a whole pile of stuff and I didn't want to, I didn't know where I was going. So I just gave it all away to either people, friends, charities, whatever. When I moved here, I was looking for a furnished place so I wouldn't have to do all that. But after seven months of looking and not finding anything, I took this place that I'm in and it wasn't furnished. But overnight, like the next day, I found a fridge for 50 bucks, oh no, the fridge was free, I think I paid 20 bucks for it, washing machine for 50 bucks and a bed for 50 bucks. The bed was the most comfortable bed I've ever slept in. But after that, everything else that's in this house, everything, <coughs> excuse me, everything <laughs> that is in this house was given to me from this area. I live in a fairly rich area and they have a pay it forward page and they've just always, like I've got office desks, actually I paid for one of the office desks, office chairs, mahogany coffee table, another coffee table, another free TV. Someone gave me the most gorgeous, comfortable leather lounge. The whole house has been furnished by them. And so now, because I'm moving hours away, I'm able to just leave it here for the next person if they want it, because most of the house is furnished. I'll take some of the things I need, but I don't have to move a whole pile of stuff. And that's, that's abundance. That's never, I have to tell you, that's never happened to me before. I've always had to buy my own stuff before, but um, yeah, this just proves that this just proves that this is what's possible when you open yourself up to abundance. And if you're thinking, the key to just know whether you're in abundance or not is look at your thinking, or look at what you're feeling. If you're feeling dread. But you can't pay the rent, you're in the 3D and you need to raise your frequency up into the fifth. And then breathe. Let that stuff thank it for showing you where you're still not fully connected to your light and to your infinite abundance. And breathe and let it come up. But take your frequency back up straight away and just go, no, I'm an infinitely powerful being. Like talk back to that ego that's run your life for so long and made a bloody big mess of it. So <clears throat> I know there's lots of people struggling but you can stop that struggle, struggle by just putting yourself in the fifth dimension. And in, the other way to do it is you can just sit in a chair and invite everything that's out of alignment with the infinite abundance that you know that you are or the infinite wealth or whatever that you know that you are. And just do that deep breathing and let it float to the surface. You could also listen to this video 
a couple of times in a row and you'll see that it starts to come up for you because that was why we decided to do one because we know there's lots of people struggling. Just breathe. Now I don't aimlessly mean start chanting. <laughs> now I'm a rich, I'm a rich and wealthy person. I don't mean that. I mean, you know, just make it as a command and let the stuff come up or invite. The best thing to do is just invite it before it comes up. But your life circumstances are showing you what's actually going on on the inside of you anyway. Alrighty, we've run out of time again to really do the fifth dimension connection, but it's just breathing in and connecting to the sun, breathing out, breathing in and bring the sunlight down, filling your 100 trillion cells, 100 trillion telomeres, taking the last 5% down into earth, connecting that into earth, the last 5% and then breathe in and bring all the earth energy back up and bring the last 5% up to the sun and just do that. Just continue to do that, up and down breath. It's best to do outside standing barefoot and it will bring you into alignment with all of the source light from the sun and all of the abundance of the universe. Do that for 20 minutes at the start of your day and see what shows up. And if you want to know how to do more of that, we're running a 10-week Become a Powerful Spiritual Activator, Fifth Dimension Spiritual Activator training program starting in April. Breathe. And if you'd like to, all the details will be below in the comments. So it's going to give you a 20-second blast or a bit more than that, maybe a 40 second blast of fifth dimensional energy here. And I trust that helps you all. Just, just take vigilance with your thinking and move your thinking or your feelings to being 99% abundance and 1%. Oops, thank you for showing me where I'm still not healed. And breathe. Okay, gorgeous beings of light, that's us done for another day and I've got a heap more packing to do, so I'll see you tomorrow.